Brandy and Teresa Stone have always walked the straight and narrow path. But all it takes is one misstep to fall from grace. They were considered to be the pillars of the church. They participated in church activities. They had raised their children in the church. But when an unlikely affair leads to unholy murder, these neighbors learn a terrifying lesson. It's the biggest betrayal that I have ever seen. It's just really hard to stomach a lot of it. Because two is company, three is a crowd, and one is a killer. I've always made a point of getting to know my neighbors. Well, you know, there's no harm in being a little nosy. It's when you use your hands that you get in all the trouble. It's sad to say, the best of friends sometimes do make the worst of enemies. But a girl still needs a confidant, and not just anyone will do. Our deepest desires require the most divine discretion. When Teresa married Randy, they had love in their hearts and faith in their fellow man. But it turns out, everyone has a secret. Some better kept than others. But what some people call gossip, police call motive. And there's nothing like murder to get tongues wagging. Like any good Midwestern boy, Randy Stone was raised believing in three simple things. God, country, and family. Randy was disciplined and dedicated and uh, just always strove for excellence in everything that he did because he was just that kind of person. Having grown up on the rough side of Kansas City, Missouri, he wants something better. And what's better than wearing a sharp new uniform? Immediately after high school, Randy joined the Marines and they traveled the world, fought in Desert Storm. And if there's one thing a soldier looks forward to when he comes home, it's the love of a good woman. Hey, Lucky for Randy, she's right around the corner. Randy and Teresa grew up on the same block. So when Randy gets back from the service, he decides to give her a call saying, do you want to hang out? He was hook, line, and sinker after that. Well, who can blame him? After all, the young Teresa Greenwald is quite a catch. Randy saw in Teresa um, a good Christian upbringing. She was attractive and she had a good personality. They dated for about seven months um, before they tied the knot and was ready to start a family. And just nine short months later, in the summer of 1991, they do exactly that with the birth of their first child. But the cycle of life continues to turn. And as Randy and Teresa gain one family member, they lose another. When Randy's father died, he was 52 and died of a heart attack. And I don't believe he had any life insurance. And my grandmother was left with all of the bills. So I think Randy saw that and immediately thought, I'm not gonna let that happen to my family. So Randy decided to get into the insurance business. As it turns out, Randy was born to sell insurance. And when he persuades Teresa to join him, their business flourishes. Randy and Teresa had a little office out of their basement where they would make phone calls out of the phone book. I mean, just starting from the ground up. But slowly but surely, he became very successful. With business booming and a second child rounding out the family, the Stone's cup runneth over. And when blessings are this abundant, it's only right to give thanks. Religion was very important to the Stone family. Teresa attended church regularly on Sundays. And so naturally, when she got married to Randy, he joined that part of her life. And they became very active within the Baptist church. But like a small breeze on a still pond, just the slightest change can make waves in any relationship. Randy called us and said that the new pastor coming on board and he was really excited about it and wanted us to come and hear him preach. 
So we gave it a shot, and July 4th, 1999 was David Love's first Sunday at the church, and we came and fell in love with him like everyone else. Ah, Pastor David Love. There's nothing like a fresh new missionary behind the pulpit to renew the people's faith and the ladies' attention. David came to the church with his wife and two children, and he had a sense of charisma, he was younger, he had energy, and many people are excited for, for what he was going to bring. Good morning, all. But if there's one church member that's particularly inspired by the new pastor, it's Mrs. Teresa Stone. Hmm, what is it about a man of the cloth that makes a woman wonder what's underneath? Teresa and David quickly became friends, but then that friendship quickly turned into something much more. After nearly a decade of marriage, Teresa's eye can't help but be drawn to the man behind the pulpit. And always the willing shepherd, Pastor Love is waiting for her with open arms. Just weeks after David's arrival, flirtations give way to promises which turn into sin. Teresa's personality was one of flirtation. David's personality was very charismatic, very trusting, very loving. Um, and so it didn't take much for that to develop and blossom very quickly into a sexual relationship. It seems when Mrs. Stone is around, the good preacher loses sight of one particular lesson. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. The church was a nice, intimate setting. Everyone knew everyone, and they knew everyone's business. So it was a very risky venture for him to start a relationship like this. It looks like Pastor Love is living up to his name, and the consequences will be nothing short of sinful. Get more Deadly Affairs online. In the small town of Independence, Missouri, Randy and Teresa Stone have a picture-perfect life. Two kids, a beautiful home, and a strong bond with their local church. But when a new pastor comes to town and takes a special liking to Teresa, that bond begins to break, and the damage will be beyond repair. Anytime that you have an affair, you have some level of, of secrecy going on, and you have two different lives. So the affair between Teresa and David was extremely risky. Talk about practicing what you preach. This minister gives new meaning to the old rule, love thy neighbor. Teresa was able to meet with David because they had a standing counseling meeting sometimes once a week, at least at the house. So it wouldn't be anything for them to go back to Teresa's house and engage in some type of sexual activity. But the devil is in the details. And this devious liaison is certainly well executed. David and Teresa were very effective and able to pull off uh, secret rendezvous. They were able to communicate effectively by way of disposable phones. And they would call and or text each other back and forth about their rendezvous or just little small messages. I love you. I'm thinking about you. It's a hush-hush fling. It starts with sparks, but eventually simmers into a slow burn. The affair between David and Teresa just started off as something casual. Then they started realizing that they had feelings for each other. So they carried on this affair for 10 years. But Randy never once suspected that an affair was going on between Teresa and the pastor. And why would he? A man's pastor is his noble leader, his moral compass, his trusted confidant, or so Randy thought. Randy and David did meet weekly, every week, uh, usually bright and early Wednesday mornings. And if Randy had a spat with Teresa, or if they had come to a disagreement, he would let David know about that and then ask what he should do or what he thought about it. Oh, I'm sure David had plenty of input when it came to guiding Randy and Teresa's marriage. Into the ground, that is. It's the biggest betrayal because Randy trusted David so much that he shared his deepest, darkest secrets with him. And the whole time, he's looking at my uncle, knowing that he's sleeping with his wife. 
Thank you. If word gets out about the sins of the father, he'll have to face off against more than just his maker. But these forbidden lovers have no intention of stopping what they've started. David and Teresa had always had plans to take their affair to the next level. In January of 2010, they discussed getting married and having a wedding on the beach. And they discussed the wedding gown and the kind of music that was going to be played. But divorce is tricky business for a man of the cloth. And little do Teresa and David know, Randy Stone has been making a plan of his own. One that will come as quite a shock to his wife and his supposed best friend. One of the roles that Randy had at his church was keeping track of the finances, and he became upset about the way Pastor Love was spending some of the money more on personal things for his family and not necessarily for the church. In the March of 2010, Randy eventually sent David an email telling him that he was going to resign from the church and that his family was going to leave the church because he could no longer put up with how the money was being spent. And things are about to get much worse for Pastor Love. After years of infidelity and lies, it is now only a matter of time before the whole truth is revealed. Church members, they realized that something was going on between Teresa and David. If this affair had become public, they had a whole lot to lose. Randy was a Marine. Randy had a temper. Had he found out that there was an affair between David and Teresa, I can only imagine, because he would have been too proud to allow that to happen. If David and Teresa want to realize their plan of being together, they will have to act fast before the whole house of prayer cards comes falling down on top of them. After a decade of lies and betrayal, the secrets of Pastor David Love and his married paramour, Teresa Stone, are about to come crashing down. Lives are on the line, and there is no telling what some people will do to keep a secret. Had David and Teresa divorced their spouses, David wouldn't have been able to be a pastor any longer at that particular church. He would have lost instant credibility. Teresa obviously would have lost the respect of her family and her church, so they had a whole lot to lose had they uh, separated and married each other. After all, you can run away from a bad marriage, but you can never outrun a bad reputation. Something's got to give, but which one is about to go? On March 31st, 2010, Teresa had an appointment around 2, so she left and ran some errands. And then she didn't arrive back at the office till 5 o'clock. And that's when she noticed things didn't quite look right. The door was locked, the blinds were closed, and once she got inside, she started yelling for Randy to see if he would answer, and he didn't. She went back in the copy room. She discovered Randy on the floor, on his side, uh, just laying there. Uh, she could readily see that there was some blood around his head. First responders are dispatched immediately to the scene, but there is nothing they can do. Randy Stone is dead. Randy had sustained a gunshot wound to the head, but there were no signs of a struggle. And we noticed that there was a large sum of cash on Teresa's desk that had not been bothered or, or tampered with. So that would seem to rule out the possibility of a robbery. With a gun nowhere to be found and nothing but a shell casing left behind, police are left scratching their heads. It seemed to us that whoever shot Randy would have been somebody Randy knew. Randy probably was visiting with the person who actually shot him. This had all the signs of an execution. Uh, he appeared to just be standing at a copy machine and was shot in the back of the head. It's news that takes Randy's family by complete surprise. And I just remember crying so hard, my eyes hurt. The police would ask, did you know of anyone that had a vendetta with Randy? It was very hard to come up with anything because everyone loved Randy. But it seems there's someone who loved Teresa just a bit more. 
we found a one-page letter that had been torn in several pieces that was found in Teresa's trash can next to her desk. And it was basically a love letter. We weren't sure who it was from, but the contents of the letter made it very clear Teresa would have had to have known who this letter was from. It was talking about happy birthday and how they thought she was beautiful and they wanted to spend their life with her. It was immediate red flag and a possible motive in Randy's murder. Well, Teresa certainly knows a thing or two about not-so-secret admirers. Except down at the station, she's much less forthcoming than usual. When Teresa was asked about the letter, she seemed to be taken off guard. She hesitated for quite a while, and then she eventually told us, well, that was from an anonymous person. I don't know who wrote the letter. Clever girl, that Teresa. But her charade doesn't end there. Teresa indicated to us that uh, she was happily married. Uh, there were no issues in their marriage. But she did not appear to be as emotional as you would expect her to be. So we know that something's not quite right. Uh, we're not sure what it is. And she's not spilling the beans. But someone else has plenty to say. About a week after Randy's murder, there was Randy's funeral, and Pastor Love took it upon himself to deliver the eulogy. We sit here today and we weep because of all the questions that death brings. Why? Why him? Why now? Without answers, death seems so cold. Sleep with a murdered man's wife and then sing his praises? Sounds like David Love has forgotten yet another key commandment. Thou shalt not lie. Over the next week or so, we interviewed multiple people from the church. And on several occasions, we were hearing rumors of a possible affair between David and Teresa, or at least an inappropriate relationship. For the most part, it was just rumor. But to us, an affair would have, would have been a motive for murder. And rumors aren't the only thing piling up against Teresa and David. So is the evidence. There was a, a 40 caliber shell casing found at the crime scene. We've been told by friends and family members of Randy that he owned a 40 caliber Glock handgun that he was quite proud of. So we went to Teresa's house in an effort to find that handgun, but the gun was gone. We asked Teresa many times, where's this gun? And she did not know. Funny how details just slip your mind at the most inopportune times. She did mention that Brandy used to go to some farm property out east of town to target shoot with that handgun. So we went to the area, we searched the ground, we found some shell casings that would have come out of that gun. We took those shell casings along with the shell casing from the crime scene and sent it to the crime lab. And they were able to determine that Brandy was actually shot and killed with his own gun. And who had access to that gun? and could have slipped it into the killer's hand. None other than Teresa Stone. Police circle back and question her again, and this time, she decides to tell the truth. Teresa eventually confessed that the love letter that we found in her trash can was in fact from David. She confirmed that she had been having uh, a sexual relationship with him for about 10 years. Investigators got information from Teresa that David had admitted to killing Randy, uh, so investigators needed to follow up on that. Unfortunately, the preacher isn't as quick to confess. When David is brought in for questioning, he quickly lawyers up and shuts down. Police were able to obtain search warrants for his home as well as for the church. They seized computers and found a series of emails back and forth between David Love and Teresa uh, just talking about their sexual escapades and the things that they wanted to do. With rumors, search warrants, and police tapes swirling around the church, Pastor Love is feeling the heat. Just because there was strong evidence of an affair does not a murderer make in David Love. So in conjunction with the rumors, he resigned his position at the church and um, went to another state where he began a separate career and became a truck driver. For seven months, David goes on with his life, 
while investigators dig deeper into the ex-pastor's dirty deeds. They're looking through evidence, their phone records, they're checking to see where he actually was the day that Randy was murdered. And like an answered prayer, police finally find the missing piece to a deadly puzzle. There was one cell phone tower ping in particular that put David uh, geographically within less than two miles from the crime scene, within probably 10 minutes of Randy's death. That, along with the additional evidence that had been collected throughout the investigation, seemed to paint a picture that David had to be the, the only suspect. The prosecutors finally had enough evidence to charge Pastor Love with murdering Randy Stone. So in November of 2010, they issued a warrant for his arrest, and they extradited him back to Missouri. With David Love finally in handcuffs, Teresa has a lot of explaining to do. And police soon learn she is guilty of far more than a seedy affair. The evidence against Teresa was her own words. Teresa admitted that she provided David the combination to the gun safe so that David could get the gun out of the safe. Teresa Stone, while not actively involved in shooting her husband, knew that it was going on. David Love came into Randy's insurance agency, and it just came upon Randy all of a sudden to where there was no time to react. He took Randy's gun that Randy was very proud of, shot him one time in the head, and then left, taking the gun with him and disposing of it. It's a dastardly act. One that David Love pleads guilty to. In November 2011, he is sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole in 25 years. And his mistress doesn't fare much better. Teresa admitted to the prosecutor that her primary motive was to collect insurance money, approximately $800,000. But she did not know that Randy had sometime around 2005 he moved Teresa's name as a beneficiary and replaced her name with his two children randy always did like to be prepared and it looks like this time he prepared for the absolute worst in spring of 2012 Teresa pled guilty to conspiracy to commit murder and was sentenced to eight years in prison a pastor is supposed to lead his flock to righteousness but instead David Love led Randy Stone to his death. Randy didn't deserve to die like this. No one does. He was killed at the hands of two selfish individuals, but that didn't define his life. And so he will be remembered for all of the good things that uh, he brought to this world. There were 2,000 people that stood in line at his funeral to pay their respects. That many people loved Randy, and that's that's the person that we all have lost. Nothing that happens is going to bring Randy back, but Teresa and David will be punished in another place. Faith in your fellow man can be tough to come by. Well, I've always been very fond of my neighbors. Their wives haven't had much faith in me. While nothing quite delights like a peek into people's private lives, it's best to be careful. You never know what you might see or where it might lead. Confidant, and not just anyone will do. Our deepest desires require the most divine discretion. When Teresa married Randy, they had love in their hearts and faith in their fellow man. But it turns out, everyone has a secret. Some better kept than others. But what some people call gossip, police call motive. And there's nothing like murder to get tongues wagging. Randy and Teresa Stone have always walked the straight and narrow path. But all it takes is one misstep to fall from grace. They were considered to be the pillars of the church. They participated in church activities, 
They had raised their children in the church. But when an unlikely affair leads to unholy murder, these neighbors learn a terrifying lesson. It's the biggest betrayal that I have ever seen. It's just really hard to stomach a lot of it. Like any good Midwestern boy, Randy Stone was raised believing in three simple things, God, country, and family. Randy was disciplined and dedicated and uh, just always strove for excellence in everything that he did, because he was just that kind of person. Having grown up on the rough side of Kansas City, Missouri, he wants something better. And what's better than wearing a sharp new uniform? Immediately after high school, Randy joined the Marines and they traveled the world. Because two is company, three is a crowd, and one is a killer. I've always made a point of getting to know my neighbors. Well, you know, there's no harm in being a little nosy. It's when you use your hands that you get in all the trouble. It's sad to say, the best of friends sometimes do make the worst of enemies. But a girl still needs a caught in desert storm. And if there's one thing a soldier looks forward to when he comes home, it's the love of a good woman. Lucky for Randy, she's right around the corner. Randy and Teresa grew up on the same block. So when Randy gets back from the service, he decides to give her a call saying, do you want to hang out? He was hook, line, and sinker after that. Well, who can blame him? After all, the young Teresa Greenwald is quite a catch. Randy.